My name is Andrew with Block After Block, and today I'm going to show you how I made this edge grain plywood arcade. First, I started by taking measurements of the really cheap monitors that I got off of Facebook Marketplace. This to determine the dimensions for the rest of the build. Now let's make some edge grain panels. Now that we have our edge grain panels, it's time to cut out the hole for the monitor. I've made an arcade in the past and this was what I found to be the hardest part, so I used a tool that I didn't have back then and I cut it out on my x carve CNC. As you can tell, my digital file was a little off and I had to remove the excess with the utility knife. It wasn't a big deal, it was about a sixteenth inch. I did a little mock-up out of scrap wood. It's a good thing I did because I realized I couldn't make that bottom cut safely on my table saw so I edited my design a bit and had the side panels sit on top of the bottom instead of being joined at the corner. You can see me sneaking up on the cut here. Math is hard and this is just a much easier way to make sure you get the right cut. To make it easier on myself, I did most of my sanding before assembly. I sanded up to 180 grit. I also made sure to round over the edges because the plywood edge grain tends to tear out a little bit when you cut it along the seam. Because of my design change I had to give the side panels a little bit more strength in its joint because they're not a normal miter, they're actually uh, sitting on top and it's probably overkill but these screws will help give it strength and keep it from moving while the glue is setting. My wife was kind enough to help me with this part. I was lazy and didn't make any custom blocks to clamp these together so we used the uh, hand clamps and drove in the screws on both sides. It was a little hectic as you can imagine with uh, the things shifting around and having to get just right but in the end it worked out okay.
tried a couple times to get clamps on here and I just struggled so I went with the good old-fashioned painters tape and it worked out really well. I just made sure to put a lot on and pull it tight. I brainstormed for a while about how I wanted to put the side panels on. It's really important to have access to this area because you need to get to the electronics on both sides. I ended up going with a half inch rabbit both on the frame and the panel. This gave me a really good friction fit. I just kept chewing away at the panel until it was flush with the body. I roughly cut out the shape of the side panel with my jigsaw and then I snuck up on the line that I traced using my edge sander. tear out from the CNC cut, I hid this by cutting out a little channel to run the power cord. The next thing I did was put a round over on all the side panel contact points. The idea here was to make it a easier to get it to fit in, but also keeping it pretty tight. I used an inch and a quarter Forzner bit to drill some finger holes. I did three coats of water-based polyurethane. I made sure to sand with 320 grit before the last coat. I tried to think of a few clever ways to hold these in place and I gave up and used hardwood with screws and it's, it's worked out okay. There are a ton of resources out there that show you how to set up RetroPie. I linked a few of the ones that I use below. For my specific setup, I used a Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard and an HDMI splitter because out of box RetroPie doesn't play well with two monitors. You can probably do it with coding, but the easiest way is to spend $20 and get this splitter. On screen is the diagram I used for the HDMI cords and the power cords. All the products I used are linked below. It felt really good for it to turn on and work like it was supposed to first try. That doesn't normally happen for me, so just a little bit of cable management here and we are ready to go. The next step was to get these 8-BitDo controllers set up. I linked to a video below that I found extremely helpful for this step. I got my arcade loaded up with all my favorite games from my childhood, the main one being the Tony Hawk series for PlayStation 1, obviously. I'm not going to get into how to load ROMs, you can find plenty of stuff on the internet about that. Thank you for watching. If this is something you enjoyed, please let me know and maybe I can do some more of it in the future. I'm pretty active on Instagram if you'd like to give me a follow on Matt Block after Block. Thanks.